I want to bring on a friend that I haven't seen in a, quite a long time. Actually, I, I thought she was still out in the West, and that's Bridget Tapp, uh, who is an author and uh, construction company owner and grandma and and historian <laughs> and my, my Cameroonian sister. And you, we can go on and on. Is that right, Bridget? <laughs> that's right. That's right, Denise. Thank you so much for for giving me the opportunity to celebrate my third great grandmother, Miss Azalee C. Brooks. Thank you so much um, for Black History Month. She was a businesswoman of what we now call and refer to as Airbnbs here in DC in the 1940s. So, um, t tell me, I mean, tell me, give me some background on your great on your great great grandmother and uh, why you became so interested in her story. Oh my, well, this is a story that has been in my family for nearly a hundred years. Um, it is recorded that my grandmother purchased more than 10 properties here in Washington, D.C. It's recorded in the historical properties in D.C. that she owned more than 10 properties here. And I've always been intrigued because the stories was passed down from my grandmother um, and now the historian of my family, which is my grand aunt, Azalee Rippey, who shares the same name as her great grandmother. As her where, grandmother. Were these, where were some of these properties, Bridget? Oh, these properties, uh, 456 M Street, 2801 13th Street, 1302 Park Road, um, 1505 uh, L Street, 505 L Street. So they are all around D.C., near Union Station, everywhere. And a lot of this, mm -hmm. yeah, I was just going to say, when you think about that period, and first of all, one, how was she able to acquire the properties, uh, even in this day and time for somebody to own more than one house is, mm -hmm. is you know, unique. But in those days, we would think that it would, may have been more challenging. But also it was a time when there was this, you know, part of the Great Migration. People were coming you know, from the South to the North to find jobs. And they and a lot of Black folks were in D.C., but they were still coming to D.C. So is there anything you can tell us, one, about how she acquired the properties, and two, who was staying in those Airbnbs? Okay, so I will tell you, that's a really good question, Denise. And that's still a mystery in our family. Um, how the, the question is, how did grandmother get the money to gift all of her children a house to start their own room and house businesses? Well, we believe that she came to D.C. with cotton picking money that she stayed and or perhaps that her grand, her great, I'm sorry, her white grandfather, because she was the daughter of a mulatto slave. So we believe that the funds could have perhaps come from her, her um, slave owner's white grandfather. That's where we believe the money might have come from. But she came with money in hand. From where? Stayed. From um, St. George, South Carolina. Okay. She, was, she was born January the 1st, 1878, 13 years after the end of slavery, to her father, which was a mulatto former slave. And so she came to D.C. and she purchased land. These were rooming houses. These and so houses. that she passed. How many children did she have? She had five children. She had two girls and three boys. Um, two, the two girls were twins, and she bought when she came to D.C. She bought many with her, so many and her stayed in a room and house first when they first arrived here, and then they went on. They both could read and write, but they went on to further their education at Garnet Patterson School. Interesting. And then they bought these houses, and so how did that work? I mean, how did people find the rooming houses, and and how much did she charge to stay there? Okay, so most of the business was conducted by word of mouth. Okay, but I do know that she placed ads in the Star newspaper. She also placed ads in the Alfro because my grandmother told me this, and she put placed ads in the Washington Post. So that's the way she received. You know, she got her marketing out through posting ads in the newspaper. And, and were those? Were those houses, those rooming houses open to um
and, and I'm going to use the, the terms of the day, only colored or Negro people, or were they open to anybody? Bridget, you there? I'm here. I'm here. Sorry about oh, good. that. Yeah, no, it happens. Technology. I had a lot of questions <laughs> while you were gone. One, do you, do you um, are any of the houses that your great grand, great great grandmother owned, are they still, are any of them still owned by the family? No, um, actually, the, the houses stayed in our family from the 1940s up into the mid 80s, and they were passed down to offsprings, and off, offsprings eventually sold them. The light, last property I know, the one at 2801 13th Street, was eventually sold to a Howard University professor. Interesting. Okay. And, and, um, uh, I can only imagine what your great great grandmother paid for each house, which mm -hmm. probably in that day was 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 probably a lot of money, even if it was five thousand dollars or less. Mm -hmm. And what that house, one of those houses, would have sold for today. Okay, so I <laughs> have did, you looked at that? I did. I did look at the research. I did the research on um, the house that's located at four fifty six um, M Street now is valued at 2.8 million and the house that's at 2801 13th street is about 2.5 million and they are currently on um, that house is currently under construction and being converted into four um condo units because it's a huge a big large house so they're selling units in the house right now so wow that's amazing they, that's amazing a lot of money right now so is this this is this the sub this is a you did a book about this and we haven't talked about the book so okay. um yeah tell us about that okay so of course i am an offspring of my grandmother and i am very very proud to say that that dna passed on to me and i wrote my first children's book which i paid homage to my great grandmother as elise seabrooks and the name of my book is it rains in africa it Rains in Africa is about the discovery of our African ancestry. And it can be purchased on Amazon.com. It's in French and English. And I also have um, Portuguese, Spanish, and Chinese versions coming soon. Wow. Wow. And so what, what, will, what will young people get out of that book when they read it? Oh, my. It's basically bridging the gap in the African diaspora. Is teaching about tracing your roots, discovering who you really are, and going back to Africa and learning that Africa is really not a bad place. You'll be surprised to learn all the great things that's in Africa. Well, I, you know, I'm thrilled because I got a chance to meet you after a group of us who uh, did our DNA found yes. ourselves together in Cameroon because that's where our uh, ancestral roots, uh, that's what uh, African ancestry showed was our, you know, our ancestral roots. And I, was that on your millennial side, your great, 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 great grandmother's side? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. Almost, mm -hmm. Wonderful. And my, my mother's on this, uh, watching us as well. And that's where, you know, my, this, mine's descent from is uh, from Cameroon as well uh, mm -hmm. on her side. Um, and what was that experience like for you? Is, is that sort of captured in the book as well? Was that your first trip to, to Africa, first of all? It and was. was that captured? Okay. Yeah, it was my first trip. And I am so proud of this body of work because I get to honor my great aunt, Azalee Rippey, who's watching right now. Shout out to my aunt, my grand aunt, Azalee Rippey. Um, yes. She is the only living, the only living granddaughter of the great grandmother that I'm referring to who owned all of these properties. So her input was very, very important to this story that I'm sharing today. Wonderful. And so that we can, it's called, give us the name of the book again. It rains in Africa. It, it rains in Africa. It rains and you use the word rain to, to explain why you use R E I G N. Oh yes. Rain royal the royal sovereign reign meaning it rules because i was tapped the first recognized dna trace princess in the country of cameroon so that's the reason why i chose that word specifically yes yes we we, we do refer to you as princess tikar exactly <laughs> exactly and people need to 
<laughs> yes, 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 yes. I was given that name. And so right. I honored that. I really honored that. And that was um, all because of the importance of me learning, embracing um, my ancestors. I totally was not expecting that. But that was the gift that was sent to me from my great grandparents and my great grandmothers. So I'm, I'm honored. I'm very honored. I think that's interesting. I mean, as we wrap up uh, to say that, you know, while our ancestors may no longer be with us in the physical, you know, realm, they're still with us, you know, mentally, physically, you know, in our DNA. Uh, and they continue to speak to us. And I think they continue to support us. And uh, as a consequence, you have this book. <laughs> you yeah. may not have the houses, but you've got this book to and continue to tell the story. Yes. Exactly. And it will be in the Library of Congress, in addition to all the other books that I have coming, because I also have another one coming called Swap, Reconnect, and Learn. And it's wow. a, commemor a commemoration. It's a learning activity book. And it's a commemorative about our DNA story that happened in Cameroon. So I'm looking forward to that great body of work that will be out on, on April the 6th this year. Wonderful. Yeah. Bridget, you're quite an inspiration. We thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we hope that folks will go out and get the book and uh, follow, look, check out your own ancestry. You know, do that. And, and also tell the story. That's what's most important. Tell the story. And so as we pass these houses on our, in our streets of Washington, D.C., and realize that Black folks owned a lot of this property, uh, I mean, we've lost some, but, you know, we still own a lot here in D.C., and we need to value that. So thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Denise. Love All you. Right. Love you, too. Where do you come to get